All right, there we go. If you guys have the pretest open in the Google Classroom, uh, if you don't have it open, this is exactly what it's, what it's gonna look like. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit on the screen. There we go. Our first topic of review, like I said, we're gonna kinda go over a few things and then we're gonna be out of class. Uh, it's not gonna last the whole time. I do wanna give you guys an opportunity uh, towards the end to maybe uh, work on this on your own before third period as well, all right? The good news is, as always, as since this is our pretest, this is exactly, exactly how the test is gonna look like on Thursday, all right? There are 20 questions total and I know some of you guys are like, oh my gosh, that's a super long test. The good news is the first 12 are right here. The first 12. And all you have to do is literally type in a yes or a no, telling, uh, telling me if this is a function or not, all right? So the first 12 is, if you know what a function is, if you're solid on functions, then you're gonna be good on the first 12. That quiz that we took on Thursday, where you guys got that 88%, that's functions. That's this right here, okay? So let's uh, continue. Just as a little review, what is a function? Again, a function is any relation that has one output per input. So one y value for every x value, all right? So if we look at number one, we have uh, different uh, x values, inputs, negative five, negative seven, negative nine, and three, right? Those are all different. Now they all have one output, right? So someone unmute themselves real quick. Is this a function or not? What do you think? It's a function. Yes, Christopher, awesome job. It is a function. Because even though these inputs have one output, right? The, uh, it, each input is different. So each one input has one output. Oh, Fallon, I saw your uh, student ID, that's awesome. I got mine yesterday too. So guys, just a reminder, if you do want your student ID and, take it, and your picture taken, uh, they are taking it today from 12.30 to six. Uh, so in the South Odd. It's, it's okay, Fallon, it didn't look bad. So, all right, so that, uh, number one, is a function. Number two, someone besides Christopher, tell me if this is a function or not. Someone be brave and unmute yourself. Is it a function or not? Let me check the chat. Someone might put it in the chat. So a function is one output for every input. If we notice, we have a negative three for our input and then a negative eight. Okay, let's see that. Well, then we have a negative three and a negative five. Uh-oh, this should be a red flag automatically. It's because here we have the same input of negative three, but then there are two different outputs, all right? If you have two outputs per one input, we do not have a function, all right? All right, graphs, here we go. The three, kind of the three main ways of representing functions are like this, a coordinate, you know, coordinate points. We have a table of values and then a graph. Someone real quick, unmute themselves. I'm gonna do my vertical line test. Is my exponential graph right here, is that a function, yes or no? Someone unmute themselves. You got this, be brave. Yes, yes. It is a function, yes. Thank you, we had a couple people answer, awesome. Because, and I love graphs, graphs are the easiest when it comes to determine if it's a function. Because we draw one vertical line anywhere on that graph, and if it only touches one time, we do have a function. Sweet, All right? Because that means that for each x value, each x value on this axis, it only touches the graph once. So there's one y value, which is one output, all right? I'm gonna do the next one real quick. This point right here, five comma six, five comma six, 
Think of that as the same dot. It's the same exact coordinate point. So if we look at the other inputs, negative five and four, each input only has one output. So yes, this is a function. If there is a repeat coordinate point like that, don't be confused. It really, I don't know why they kind of put that there. It's the same point. It still only has one output. So it is a function. All right. Look at that. Four of them already done. Right. So once again, guys, this this pretest is a required assignment. And so I'm, I'm wanting to work through a little bit with you guys. So that way, when we end the Zoom, you guys have a little bit of time to continue it on your own. And if you just could, if you finish it, click submit, boom, you're done. You get full credit for it. OK. All right. Next table of values. I'll give you guys a little hint. If you ever see any coordinate points or a table of values with different x values, notice these are all different. One, two, three, and four. We automatically have a function, right? There's no repeat x values. Each input only has one output, so we know for sure it's a function, okay? And then very last one, I wanted to do the first six with you guys. There's kind of a debate last year when I was, you know, when we were back in person, uh, we had a lot of students debating each other whether a straight vertical line is a function. This is like the definition of a vertical line test. So someone unmute themselves, be brave. Tell me yes or no if this is a function. What do you guys think? If I were to, no yes, not a function, exactly. Because if you think about it, if we draw a vertical line, right? If we have a vertical line, up. Oh, wait a sec. Buckley, was that Mr. Ithabird behind you? Who walked behind you, Buckley, just now? Was that Mr. Ithabird? You don't know? Don't know, okay. He, he looked like one of our assistant principals here. Who is that? That is, hey. Buckley, tell Mr. Ithabird that I said hi. Be like, hey, bald Mr. Wallace says hello. <laughs> hey, guys, everyone, hey, Mr. Ithabird, come back for a sec. Come here. Everyone, I want you to take a look at one of our amazing assistant principals. Oh, he left. He's too afraid I'm going to embarrass him. Mr. Ithabird's a good dude. So, all right, anyway, back on, back on topic. Sorry, guys. If we were to draw a vertical line on a graph of a vertical line. Hey, oh my gosh, scary. Look at that. Hey guys, that's our leadership right there. Look at Advin. Look how look how nice and pleasant his face looks. If you guys ever get in trouble, you have to go see him. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Good times. Uh, back, back on point. Sorry, everyone. Uh, Christopher said we do not have a function, and that is correct. We, if you think about it, if we, if we do the vertical line test on a vertical line, there is an infinite amount of points that it crosses. If you guys ever in the future want to waste 10 minutes of class, ask me about infinity. Like, I'm having to control myself right now. I will go ultra nerd when I start talking about infinity. It's so cool. Maybe when we're back in person one day. Stop. No, don't. Don't do it, Ryder. Don't do it. Right? Uh, there is an infinite amount of points of intersections, right, if vertical line. So that's why a vertical line is never a function. Okay? All right. I'm going to uh, leave this right here. That's our first section. We're already one-third of the way done with our review. Uh, I'm going to open it up for 10 non-awkward seconds of silence. I'm going to go on gallery view real quick. Are there any questions you guys have? Any questions? The functions are pretty self-explanatory. And once again, this is what you guys scored so well on on Thursday. That 88% where you beat first period, that was pretty legit. All right. So I'm going to go through gallery view real quick. Christopher, Jeanette, Fallon, Alex, Buckley, uh, Taylor, Juan, Natalie, Tier, Audrey, Ryder. Sean, Chance, Trenton, Faith, Yuritzi, Aubrey, Robert, Christian, Victor, Gabriel, Kendall. You guys are awesome. Thank you guys for all being here. Um, I really do appreciate it. Okay. 
Whew. All right. No questions. No questions? No? No, 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 no? All right, sweet. Pretty, pretty good, eh? All right. Second basic, you know, second topic of our test. There's only going to be three. This is number two. Let me make sure uh, I'm solid right there. Zoom in. All right, awesome. This section is evaluating functions, all right? And if you guys are good with solving equations or plugging in values and then, um, and then calculating, this section will be pretty darn easy for you, okay? I want to go over the f of x thing again real quick. So remember, I believe it was last week, uh, we introduced function notation. This f and this x that basically just tells us we have a function, all right? It's also another thing for y. Think of it as our, as our output, okay? So when you see f of x, you're not solving for f, all right? I promise, you're not solving for f. You're not solving for that little x right there. Uh, that tells us we have a function. This is being represented in function notation, all right? It tells us when we have an input, that we are going to put it in for the x, all right? So for example, I'm gonna do number 13 for you guys. This is how you would represent an input into function notation. It's just a fancy way, guys, of plugging in a value for x and solving. Right? Don't, don't be confused on this. We're not solving for f again. This negative 2 just tells me I am putting in the negative 2 wherever the x is. So if you think about it, this 6 minus 3x, here I have 6 minus 3, and instead of the x, I just plugged in negative 2 right there. Okay? And then we will solve. Right? That's it. Right? So everyone hold up a number 1. Everyone hold up a number 1 real quick. Boop, boop, boop. We are going to solve these equations one at a time. Right, one at a time, three different ways. So hold up a three, hold up a three. Boop, boop. We're gonna solve this equation one at a time, but three different ways. The first one, we're gonna have negative two. The next one, we're gonna have zero. The next one, we're gonna have five, all right? Christopher, what, I see that calculator. Did you already figure it out? Of course you did. Or something, all right? So our first input is negative two. Let's plug that into the X. Here we go, negative three times negative two. Remember, this is uh, last week when I was talking about PEMDAS. That's our order of operations. We always do multiplication before addition and subtraction. So we have to multiply these two together. Negative three times negative two. Two negatives make a positive. Six plus six is 12. Um, if you're going to have to do this, Fallon, that's a great question. You guys will have to do this anyway. It is an assignment. I would recommend writing this down because then you don't have to do it, right? Or, well, then you can just copy it down into your homework. Oops. Yeah, that's okay. You're fine. And that's, that's actually a great point. Thank you for that, Fallon. Uh, hopefully everyone's either jotting this down or following along, um, in their Google Classroom. You guys each have a copy of this. Um, each of you do. If you're just following along or writing down notes, it'll be super easy to transfer over when you do submit this assignment. G Fallon, great question. Thank you for that. All right. Uh, let's see. Alex, I'm going to ask you a really hard question. Are you ready for this, Alex? I am I done? Is that my final answer? I got 12. I did everything correct. A am I done? Can I move on? It's a, it's a trick question. It's not hard. I plugged in. I used the negative 2. Am I done with number 13? Totally. No. Now, now what do I have to do? Tell us. You have to add the 0. Do the 0 and then also do the 5. five. Exactly. That's why I said 1 at a time, 3 different times. Okay. Thank you, Alex, for that. I appreciate it. Here. Does my... Flower look okay, Alex? Good. Okay, good. You better have said yes. Okay. 
Once again, guys, same thing. Uh, I'm using my function notation. My new input is zero, right? So that's why I put f of zero. That means I'm gonna put zero in for x. If I plug in and substitute zero for x, well, zero times negative three, it's fantastic. Zero times anything, it cancels out. It's always zero. When f of zero, when zero is my input, um, my output is six. Uh-oh, it fell. I was messing with it. I blame you, Alex. All right. I know. I have I have extra tape right here. Let, let me. Uh, I'll get, I'll work on it later. You should just get it and wrap it around your whole house. You know what? That's not a terrible idea. I don't have to worry about it. Let's see. I'm big brain. <laughs> All right. You ready for this? Hey. And a headband. There, there it is, guys. Now if I start sweating, my tape will stop the sweat and my flower is not going to fall. All right? And it doubles as a headband. Win-win. Exactly. Right? I actually look pretty good in a headband. Right? All right. Yeah. Last input. I know I'm taking my time on this. Right? Uh, my last input is 5. All right? So f of 5. If I plug in 5 for x... Now we really have to be aware that the rules of negative numbers still apply. So here we have negative three times five, negative times a positive is a negative. So we have six minus 15, and this time it equals negative nine, okay? I took a lot of space on this one. I just wanted to work it out for you guys. Obviously, this was number 13. Uh, when you guys do this assignment and then take your test on Thursday, you're going to do the same process for 14 and 15. All right. 14, there's a lot of, you know, there's kind of different terms going on here. What I would recommend is plugging in the X value, solving, right, doing the multiplication, and then just adding or subtracting from left to right, like we were doing last week. So don't let the multi-term confuse you guys. Once you plug in the x value and do that calculation, we're just moving from the left to the right, depending on what you get, okay? All right. That, oh shoot. I just tried to like make a facial expression and I'm the tape is literally pulling my skin. That was not a good idea. Fallon, why'd you tell me to do that? That's gonna hurt. It's not like duct tape, though, but that's good. <laughs> All right, uh, this was number 13. Uh, we had, just to recap, this is what you guys see in your test on Thursday, identifying functions. How are we? Are we good? We're good. This was evaluating functions. We are plugging in X and solving. Boom, we're good. Last but not least... Graphing using intercepts. Yeah. Now, I am going to throw you guys a bone. I'm going to uh, do something where a lot of you guys will be really happy. Uh, for 16, 17, 18, and 19, what is missing? What do you guys notice is not there? A graph. Yeah, Christopher. You're awesome. Hey, guys, by the way, Christopher right here. Turned 14 years old yesterday. Everyone give him a hand. Happy birthday, Christopher. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I love birthdays so much. Christopher, I'll get you uh, your own Starbucks or something. I'll, I'll have a Starbucks built for you, just for you. All right. So there is not a graph. All right. We are going to find the intercepts, but I'm not going to require you to graph these for our test on Thursday. The reason is... When we get back from Thanksgiving, everyone, we will be, be doing graphing every, every class, every day, every class, with slope-intercept form, point-slope form. We're going to be doing a ton of graphing. Found that looks good. A ton of graphing after Thanksgiving. So now I just want you to find the intercepts. Okay? It's virgin. You didn't get to finish the front page. Okay. No, that's fine. You're good. Um, all right. Thank you, Fallon. 
to uh, find, oops, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I wasn't checking the chat either. I'm not ignoring, Jeanette, I promise I wasn't ignoring you. I'm so sorry. Um, okay, to find the X and Y intercepts, uh, what we basically do is to, you know, we plug in zero for one variable and then solve for the other, All right? If we want to, first of all, find the y-intercept, what's my y-intercept? Well, I have to plug in 0 for x, right? If I plug in 0 for x, that whole thing goes away. It cancels out. And then we're just left with a super easy one-step equation. Heck yeah, I can do this all day. My y-value is 3. Right? Now, we can't really stop right there. Uh, we want to put it in a coordinate point form. So I know a lot of you guys saw this on the quizzes assignment. So on the assignment that was due uh, ooh, today, actually, yeah, quizzes, we don't want to just leave it at three, but we want to put it as a coordinate point. All right. So when my x value is zero, my y value is three. So my y-intercept we do want to kind of put it in a coordinate point. So please remember that. I'm not having you guys graph, but don't just leave it at y equals three. We have to have it as a point, okay? All right, we found my y-intercept. What's my x-intercept? Well, we do the same exact thing, but this time we plug in zero for y, all right? We, we cancel out the y. We have 3x equals 12. Oops. I know what 12 divided by 3 is, everyone. Relax. It's 7, right? My x value is 4, right? So coordinate point form, it's 4 comma 0, right? So it's super easy when you get the y is 3, x is 4. Just please make sure to put it in coordinate point form. y intercept 0, 3, x intercept 4, 0. If we were to graph this, if we were, I'm not going to have you graph it on the test. This is how it would look. All right. My x intercept of four comma zero, my y-intercept of zero comma three, all right? So when you guys do this on your own for homework in preparation for the test on Thursday, uh, just know that negative numbers, they, that still applies. The rules of negative numbers still apply. You know, for example, uh, for number 18, we have negative 8x plus 12y equals 24. If we want to find the x-intercept, well, once again, we plug in zero for y. That goes away. The 12y goes away. It cancels out because it's zero. Rules of negative numbers still apply. Positive 24 divided by negative 8. Is negative 3. So for number 18, I just gave you guys the answer. For number 18... Uh, my x-intercept is negative 3, comma, 0. Please don't put 3, all right, because that would be wrong, all right? I want to I wanna show you guys that, too. And then last but not least, what time is it? Oh, my gosh, we're going to get out early today. Nice! Last but not least, we will have one equation that goes all the way back to August.